step on it, Jefferson. We're an hour late for our deliveries now. Oh, have a heart, Mr. Cupid. Look at that speed meter. What are you worrying about? About going to my own view. What did I tell you? Here come the cops. Fellas, you keep quiet. I'll get out of this. You wouldn't be in it if you would go where the flowers was going instead of stopping where they ain't going. What do you think this is, a racetrack? Uh, no, sir. What's your name and where's your driver's license? Uh, my name is Jefferson. Thomas H. Here's my license. Uh, may I see this, officer? Terrible. Absolutely terrible. What do you mean, terrible? Well, uh, your handwriting. My handwriting? Why? Oh, now you... wait, you don't understand. It, it's the way you cross your T. You see, very high in that, in that half open O and that. That little thing you put on the end of the W? Hey, what are you trying to pull? Oh, well, nothing, only you never should have been a cop in the first place. Who are you? Uh, according to your handwriting, you have what is known as, uh, well, great artistic ability. I have what? Artistic ability. You see, you should have been a, well, a, a writer or, or a painter or, or a, a singer even. No kidding. Yeah, a writer, huh? A singer? Or a painter? How do you know? Look, here's the book I'm studying. Graphology and six easy lessons. Why, I've been studying it so long, what? I can't... A man I've never seen before. You can? Yeah, wait a minute, I'll show you. Here, read that. To Susie. And please, John Henderson. Well, what about it? Well, when you see this Henderson, he mailed his order in. And he enclosed the cards to be sent to Miss Carey with the flowers every day. So I studied his handwriting and... Bingo. Right away, I knew she couldn't marry him. Why not? Well, well, look at that R. You see that, see that little thing right there? Mm -hmm. Well, it's just like a woman's. She's a... Oh, that's correct. Say, uh, can I borrow that book on graph, uh... Will you let me... Brush up, will you? Oh, sure. So long, boys. So long, officer. <laughs> Wait right here. There's a fire plug there. Suppose the police come along. But you always say, I'll only be a minute. Mm -hmm. Ain't that a shame? Oh, hello, Jimmy. Come on in. Thank you, Miss Carey. Oh, they're lovely, aren't they? Yeah, I guess so. What's the matter, Jimmy? Look, are you gonna marry this Henderson? Why, well, I, I don't know. Why do you ask? No, oh, I hate to tell you this. But you might as well know now as later. Oh, my goodness, this sounds serious. It is. You can't marry him. Why? Because I'm a graphologist and I've analyzed his handwriting and, well, he's a weakling. Are you sure? Absolutely. My analysis is never wrong. Why, Henderson's handwriting is, well, it's womanish. Look, let me explain it to you. Your handwriting is terrible. What's that? Why, you shouldn't have been a cop on account of the graft. Are you accusing me of taking graft? Uh, no, sir. I was just trying to tell you that you could make more money on other jobs. Another word out of you, and I'll drag you out of this car. Yes, sir. Oh, my goodness. Oh, me. You see, Miss Carey, it, it's all done by science. But, Jimmy, what I don't... Uh-uh. Don't you argue with me, because I like you. And I don't want to see a nice girl like you make a... make a serious mistake. Well, how do you do, Mr. Henderson? Oh, now, Jimmy... Uh-uh. I... Don't you try to kid me. That's your hand. Well, so is that. You're not going to give me away. <laughs> of course not. What I can't figure out is, what's a pretty girl like you doing sending flowers to yourself? Well, I got sick and tired of hearing my roommate crow about her boyfriend sending her flowers, so I... Oh, I... Yeah, it's all right, too. It doesn't matter now. Can't afford John Henderson anymore. 
lost my job. So I noticed. And I decided to take care of that. How? Well, I, I don't know myself yet, but don't you worry. You just keep your chin up and let O'Brien do the work. And say, I uh, might even fix it so I can get your boyfriend, too. Is this what you call going to the grocery store? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Ma. I just stopped for a minute to do some analyzing. I'm looking for a boyfriend for Susie. Is that so? Susie. And who in the name of all the saints is Susie? Oh, you don't know her, Ma. She's an awfully sweet girl. She's a good friend of mine. Well, I'm sorry for her. The last time you tried to play Cupid, three people went to the hospital. Yeah, but that wasn't my fault. The book said that... Well, now you get out of here and analyze this grocery list for a change. Yes, ma'am. Ma, this is terrible. What's terrible? Well, according to your handwriting, you should have been a murderer. A murderer? Well, I'll murder you if you dare talk like that to your mother. But it's not me, Ma. It's just what graphology says. Don't you see that? Oh, you, you, you! <laughs> you're, you're slipping, Ma. Your, your aim's not as good as it used to be. I think mine's better. Catch that. Now, you remember this. You let that Susie alone. Heaven help her if you try and get her a boyfriend by your analyzing. Thank you, sir. Hurry up with those flowers. We have a rush delivery this morning. And what is that you're hiding behind you? Oh, oh this? Uh, well, uh, it's just some odds and ends. Uh, stuff that we don't need. I, I was taking it to a friend of mine. Don't ever let me catch you taking flowers in this place again. Now take this to Miss Phyllis Benton. And remember, it's a rush order. And when I say rush, I mean rush. Yes, sir. And remember what I said about taking flowers. Oh, I'm sorry about that, Mr. Lester. Now that I know you don't want me to, it, it won't happen again, sir. Flowers from Miss Benton. Take that box right back where it came from. And you can tell him for me I don't want his flowers or him or anything connected with him. Yeah, but listen, I... Hey, Jefferson. Hmm? I got a boyfriend for Susie. Look, this Benton gal is through with her fella, and Susie needs a boyfriend. So now all I have to do is bring them together. But suppose Miss Susie don't like him. Well, she's got to like him. He's got a lot of money, and he's a good spender. And, he, well, he's a regular he-man. Yeah, and he's got brains, too. Gosh, I can hardly wait to introduce him. I bet. Come on, let's go, Jim. Oh, say, Mr. Lester, do you know where Bill Jones lives? The one that sends flowers to Phyllis Benton? No, he's the cash customer. But what do you want to know for? Well, uh, Miss Benton gave me a message for him. She did? What was the message? Well, she said that she didn't want his flowers, him, or anything he was connected with. So I thought if you knew where he lived, why, Jefferson and I could... But I don't. And besides, we don't give messages like that to our customers. Well, I know, Mr. Lester, you see, but... Get when... on with your next delivery, Jimmy. Yes, sir. And Jimmy. Yes, sir. Don't stop to do anything else but deliver flowers. Who, me? Oh, I wouldn't do that, Mr. Lester. Lester talking. Phyllis Benton wouldn't accept the flowers. 
She said she didn't want his flowers or him or anything connected with him. And that delivery boy wants very much to find Bill Jones. No, don't worry. I stopped him on that. Yes. Yeah. Where is he? Where is he? Where to? The man is going to fall in love with Miss Susie. Oh, uh, well, I don't know yet. But I do know one thing. His name is Bill Jones. That's a big help. Well, now, listen, don't you worry about it. Just leave it to me. I'll do the work. Uh -huh. But, Mr. Cupid, if you go through that book looking all through them Joneses, we're going to be late. And we're going to get another traffic ticket in. Aren't you ashamed of yourself? Don't you want to get a boyfriend for a nice girl like Susie? Yeah, and I want to keep a job for a nice boy like Jefferson. Oh, now, quit complaining. There's nothing to it. All we have to do is check up on these Joneses and see which one sent the flowers to Phyllis Benton. That's all. Is that all? That's enough. Say, what's the idea of accusing my husband of sending flowers to another woman? The shop didn't have anything to do with it. What? Hello? No, no, we don't know anything about it. We didn't send them. Sure it was your delivery boy. And now my wife is leaving me because she said I sent flowers to Phyllis Benton. No, sir. No, we don't know anything about it. We didn't send any flowers to anybody. Hello? Listen, that kid is still upsetting the whole town looking for Bill Jones. I'm going to fire him. What? Well, what do you want a nosy kid like him up there for? All right, you're the boss. But I still think we ought to get rid of him. And I'll send him right up. Okay. It's about time you got here. What's the matter, Mr. Lester? More rush orders? Yes, and besides that, what do you mean by telephoning all over town for Mr. Bill Jones? Well, well, I told you, sir. Miss Benton gave me a message for Haven't so I told you we don't deliver messages like that to our customers? Now get busy and deliver a boutonniere to Mr. Fred Morgan's apartment. Yes, sir. And remember, Mr. Morgan is one of our best customers. So don't stop to look for any more Bill Joneses. Say, Mr. Lester, we're getting an awful lot of rush orders lately. We could certainly use a girl around here to help us. A girl? Well, yes, sir. And, uh, well, she could pack flowers and it'd give Jefferson and I a lot more time for our deliveries. And I know just a girl. Her name is Susie Carey. Get She's going. Well, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Flowers for Mr. Morgan. Well, just a moment, please. Mr. Morgan wishes to see you. This is about an hour ago. What took you so long to get here? Well, I'm, I'm sorry, but I've been looking for you. Me? Yeah, I, I've been looking all over for you, but I didn't know you were you. Well, I'm afraid I don't quite know the score. What's all this about? <laughs> well, well, you see, Phyllis Benton gave me a message to deliver to you personally. And, gosh, I looked every place for you, but I didn't know you were Bill Jones until just now. Well, wait a minute. Uh, my name is Morgan. Fred Morgan. What on earth makes you think I'm Bill Jones? Oh, look, I I'm a graphologist. And the handwriting on Bill Jones's card is identical to that on your check. I'm glad to meet you, Mr. Jones. Uh... I mean, Mr. Morgan. Tell me. What's a clever kid like you doing delivering flowers? Oh, that, that's just a sideline. My real work is graphology. I see. I suppose you're wondering why I use the name Bill Jones. <laughs> well, yes, sir, I am. Young man? Would you like to serve your country? Serve my country? Oh, boy, would I? Well, sit down. I'll give you a chance. Yes, sir. You see, about three years ago... Mm. 
Yes, sir. Fred Morgan in? Who shall I say is calling? Wait a minute, pal. I don't want to see him. I just want to know something. Well, I'm very sorry, sir, but... Now, now, I uh, don't want to know much. I'd just like to know what time Mr. Morgan left his apartment, sir. Yeah, he hasn't been out. Are you sure of that? Yes, sir. He hasn't been out. Well, okay. Got a match? Ooh, yes. Hey. Keeping you pretty busy? Well, we just make another social call. Hmm. Had a lot of deliveries today? Yes, sir, and a lot that wasn't delivered. Hey, you didn't by any chance deliver some flowers to a Miss Benton, Phyllis Benton? Phyllis Benton? Oh, yes, sir, we delivered them flowers this morning. You know who sent them? Uh, some uh, Bill Jones. Uh, Mr. Cupid is running all over town looking for him now. Cupid? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, that's a name that we call Jimmy, the delivery boy. Uh -huh. uh, what do you want to know so much about uh, Miss Benton? I'm a reporter. Uh, is she one of them celebrities? No. Well, that is, she wasn't until a few hours ago. Oh. Have a look at that. Yes, sir, she's a pretty lady. What's the matter, can't you read? Uh, I can read reading, but I can't read writing. Oh, I see. Well, listen to this. Pretty Miss Phyllis Benton was today the victim of a ruthless killer mm. who took her life under mysterious circumstances. Dressed in street clothes with packed bags as though leaving soon on a trip, the body of the girl was left in her apartment by the killer. Good gracious of me. Police authorities are carefully checking every available killer's identity. Mm -hmm. You're a G-man. Gee, that's wonderful, Mr. Morgan. And, and you're really gonna let me be your assistant? Yes, Jimmy. Gosh. Providing you'll do exactly as I tell you to do. Oh, don't worry. I will, Mr. Morgan. You can depend on me. Now, the first thing I want you to remember is that you're not to tell to anybody. Not even to the police or, or reporters or anyone. Not even the police? No. You see, Jimmy, running down spies is very dangerous work. You can't trust anyone. You never know who might be a spy. They're all over the place. Is, is Miss Phyllis Benton one? Yes, I'm afraid she is. That's why I didn't use my real name. I use lots of different names. Oh, oh, I get you. Now, I want you to keep in close touch with me. And if anybody, anybody at all, ask... Uh -huh, all right. Well, it certainly is an honor to work with you, Mr. Morgan. Thanks. Better run along now, Jimmy. Okay. Uh, say, I don't like to mention this, but just between you and I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of qualified for this job. I used to be a Boy Scout. That's fine. Well, so long. What did you mean about Cupid looking for this Bill Jones? What does he want with him? I don't know no more, mister. You better ask Mr. Cupid. Here he come now. Oh, hello, Cupid. Call yourself. Your friend here tells me you delivered some flowers today to Miss Phyllis Benton. That's right. What if I did? Well, he says that a Bill Jones sent those flowers and that you're looking for him, and I'd like to know why. You talk too much. Why are you asking me all these questions? Well, I'm a reporter, and I'd like to get a line on Miss Phyllis Benton. Well, you're a reporter. Why don't you look her up? Well, I did. You don't need me, then. She was murdered this afternoon. What? Who did it? That's what I'd like to know. Now, do you want to tell me what you want with Bill Jones? Well, no, I'm afraid that's still my business. I see. Let me give you some advice, Cupid. People who know anything about a murder and try to keep it to themselves sometimes get into trouble. Well, uh, thanks very much for nothing. I think I can manage to take care of myself. Okay. Where are we going now? Shh, sit tight. We gotta get rid of that snoop. I gotta go back up and talk to Mr. Morgan. Now look, if he comes back and asks you any questions, you don't know anything. Absolutely nothing, understand? You don't know nothing about what? About anything. About Mr. Morgan, uh, Bill Jones, Phyllis Benton, or anything. Yeah, but he said if we don't tell what we know, we will have to get in trouble. Yes, but if you do tell, you'll be a traitor to your country. Oh, Mr. Cupid, how could I be a traitor to my country? Why, my grandpappy cooked for the United States Army. Oh, now, look, try to get this into that thick skull of yours. Mr. Morgan is a G-man. G-man? Yes, and I'm a government agent now, too. You is? Yes, and, and so are you, I guess. That is, by proxy. Uh, can us wear a badge? No, no, we can't wear a badge. We're secret, secret service men. Oh, 
You got to keep it a secret. That's it. Now you got it. Now look, you wait right here for me. Can I speak to Mr. Morgan again, please? Sure, Jimmy. What is it this time? Hey, Chief, look. Somebody just murdered Miss Denton. No. He's asking me a lot of questions. Says he's a reporter. What did you tell him? Nothing, Chief. Absolutely nothing. That's fine. Who do you think would do a terrible thing like that? I don't know. One of her spies, I suppose. Probably thought it would be safer to get rid of her. Gee, spies don't... Are you in your right mind? I think so. Why take a chance like that, going to that crazy kid's house? That's just why I'm going to take chances. I don't get it. Maybe he isn't just a crazy kid. Maybe he has a brother or a father at home who put him up to all this. That's just what I was thinking. So what did you tell him all that bunk for? Because it's the surest way to keep his mouth closed. He's the only one that has me connected with Phyllis Benton. I know a better way to close his mouth. That kid's going to be very valuable to us. He'll watch every move Callahan makes. He'll notice anyone snooping around the shop. And he'll fly straight to me with the information. I still don't think My it's... dear Phillips, you never think. He'll be helping us night and day. And the sweet part of it is, a kid like that will never be suspected. Oh, but Jimmy, I'm afraid to barge in on your mother like this. Don't worry, mother's the sweetest thing in the world. Come on. Sit down. Ma! Hey, Ma! Say, what do you mean by coming home at this hour? And your are off, Mama. Uh, this is Susie, Miss Susie Carey, my mother. How do you do? She's gonna stay with us tonight. Oh, she is. Yeah, and look, I want you to say that she's your niece from California. Mr. Morgan's coming over to see me on business, and I want him to meet Susie here. And you say that she's a relative of yours, so it won't look phony to Mr. Morgan to find Susie here. No, I don't see. Oh, I'm awfully sorry, Mrs. O'Brien. I know I shouldn't have come here, but Jimmy and Susie... <laughs> That's all right, Miss Carey. I know it's no fault of yours. It's this bright son of mine. Do you mind waiting in the kitchen a few minutes till I get down to the bottom of this? Certainly, O'Brien. Jimmy O'Brien, now you listen to me. In the first place, you're laner. Well, in the second place, I've told you time and time again to stop trying to play Cupid. But in the third place, you can't use my house for a lonesome club. I'm not... And in the fourth place, I'll tell no lies about Miss Carey being my niece from California. Oh, Mom, please, it, it's not exactly a lie. We're, we're just pretending. Please, say she's your niece. I'll do nothing of the kind. There's Mr. Morgan now. Hey, Susie, Susie, come on out, he's here. Don't forget, Ma, please. She's your niece from California, huh? I will not say she's my niece from California or any other state. Oh, hi, Chief. Any new developments? Nothing new, Jimmy. Uh, come in, Mr. Morgan. Mother, I'd like to have you meet Mr. Morgan. How do you do, Mr. Morgan? It's a pleasure, Mrs. O'Brien. And this is my darling little niece who's just arrived from California, Miss Susie Carey. How do you do, Miss Carey? Uh, how do you do, Mr. Morgan? Let me take your coat, darling. Uh, Mr. Morgan, hmm. this is my graphology file. Uh, you and Susie can sit over there together and look at it, huh? <laughs> Go ahead. Sit down. Well, uh, I'm hungry now, Mom. I think I can eat supper. Come on. You'll excuse us, won't you, please? Yeah. Aren't you ashamed of yourself, putting poor Miss Carey in such an awkward position? But, Ma, according to... Don't you say graphology to me again! Shh! Well, they'll hear you. gone wrong. They're not saying anything. You think maybe I better... Mind your own business. Yeah, but I picked him for Susie's boyfriend. I gotta do something.
excuse me for busting in like this, but I just had an idea. Mr. Lester says you're one of our best customers. Is that... Uh, yes. Well, Susie's going to be looking for a job, and well, we could certainly use a girl at the shop with all these rush orders and everything, so I thought well, maybe... Why don't you speak to Mr. Lester? <laughs> well, I, I did, but uh, Mr. Lester and I aren't getting along so well right at the uh. present. Oh, excuse me, will you? Uh, I think that's for me. I left this number at my apartment in case anyone tried to reach me. Oh, well, come on, I'll show you where the phone is. Thank you. Right there on the table. 